Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good to have you with us today on First at 4. I'm Devin Skillion. We are learning disturbing new details about the disappearance of 13-year-old Naziah Harris. No one has seen Naziah since January. Wayne County Prosecutor's Office thinks there is enough evidence to prove she was murdered. Let's bring in Sean Lay with more. Sean. Devin, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, everyone. We're talking about a person connected to this little girl, 13-year-old Gozia Harris. Now, a man connected to the teen's aunt, her family was waving the red flag saying he was too close to Naziah, despite all the red flags that they were waving. They believe not enough was done on the immediate family's part. Let's get right to the video here. I'll catch everyone up. We're talking about 13-year-old Naziah Harris went missing January 9th. Hasn't been seen since. Last person seen the man she was with. Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy says today all the evidence they have points to Naziah being deceased, murdered at the hands of a family friend named Jarvis Butts. He's 41. He's charged today with the teen's murder and sexual assault. Here's Prosecutor Kim Worthy. You look at that face and you do not see the horrors that she had gone through in her short life. The exploitation, the molestations, the sexual abuse, and the pregnancy that she was concealing. The evidence will show that from one of her text messages to and with Jarvis Butts. And we also know, the evidence will show, that there's no evidence of anyone else being the father of that child other than the defendant himself who we charged today. And he knew she was pregnant. We know that she was also searching for ways to abort the baby. There's a lot there. The prosecutor worthy is just scratching the surface on. We're going to dig deeper into all of this. But the 41-year-old Butts, he has been held for months now since Naziah went missing. Held on CSC charges, criminal sexual abuse charges, of two other girls. One under the age of 13, Devin. The other as young as four years old. And at five also, I speak with family members, a cousin and aunt. Uh, great aunt of Naziah, who say they waved the red flags. They alerted the family. They alerted authorities. They say one guy being uh, charged with her murder today is not enough. They want others to be charged as well. So much more at 5 o'clock. Devin, tragic. Yeah. Back to you. Boy, it sure is. You're exactly right. A lot there, and yet a lot more still to learn. Sorry. All right, Sean. The uh, United Auto Workers Union striking a deal with Ford, narrowly averting a strike. The agreement currently under review, but there still could be trouble on the horizon as tensions mount between the UAW and Stellantis. This morning, we spoke with auto industry expert Dr. Merrick Masters about the allegations the UAW has been making against Stellantis. The union claims it has the right to strike over these um, alleged failures to live up to commitments. The company says that it does not. The language is a little bit unclear. Several grievances have been filed. They're working their way through the system, and it remains to be seen what happens, although the UAW has indicated that it may authorize a strike. And now, in the meantime, many Stellantis workers are bracing for layoffs. The company says those are necessary to make its cars affordable in the current market conditions. Michigan Court of Appeals has dropped a manslaughter charge against a Detroit gas station clerk. It was back in 2023. Al Hassan Ayash locked the door of the mobile gas station where he was working at, on McNichols, refusing to let anyone out during a robbery. Samuel McRae, a would be thief, shot three customers, killing one of them. The court ruled Ayash was not responsible because it was not reasonable or reasonably foreseeable to see uh, what the outcome. McRae is going to stand trial in October on murder charges. I want to let you know about a big cyber attack putting patients' data at risk yet again. This time it's University of Michigan's health system, which says a cyber attack potentially exposed the health information of more than 57,000 patients. All the affected patients have been advised to monitor their medical insurance statements for any evidence of fraudulent transactions. Notices were mailed out starting today. If you are worried about the breach, you can call the Michigan Medicine Assistance Line, and here's the number, one 888 409 1-888-409-7484. First at four today, we are tracking Helene, Category 3 storm expected to make landfall tonight as Helene moves north. Airports already seeing the impact. More than 1,000 flights have been canceled so far. Flood waters covering the streets in some neighborhoods in Florida's Big Bend region. You see uh, officers here trying to help people get through. Florida's governor spoke today urging anyone in Helene's path to do what they can to get out of the way. If you are in the northern part of the state, uh, and you have access and you're in an evacuation zone and you've been told to evacuate, 
you do have time to do it now, so do it. Uh, but don't wait another six hours, seven hours and say, oh man, this thing looks big and think that you're gonna wanna go out. They'll, they'll, that will be very hazardous uh, to do that. Florida, not the only place dealing with these worries. This video is from North Carolina where flash floods are forcing roads to shut down. Uh, let's check in with Ron Hilliard here and when we're we expecting uh, this storm to hit. Well, Devin, unfortunately, those impacts already being felt as you get into down and toward the south. Now, what we're seeing right now is just a little glitch, it looks like. But we are seeing, though, the hurricane getting closer and closer to land. One of the things that we're going to be seeing out there across the area is impacts from the rain, the wind, and that is expected to make landfall later on this evening. Now, I'm going to talk about the weather that we can expect right here in Metro Detroit. Also coming up in just a few moments, Devin. All right, Ron. Well, it is the Michigan uh, corn maze that went viral this past summer for its theme, which is uh, not UAW and Ford, but Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. And it opens to the public for the first time this weekend. Before it does that, our Karen Drew and Damon Fernandez uh, were put on special assignment to go check it out. And Karen and Damon are with us now. Guys. Hey, we are over in Weberville right now, about 75, 80 miles from downtown Detroit. We are at the Choice Farm Market. We've got Loretta and Todd Benjamin. They are the masterminds of this amazing cornfield. And you have a lot. We're going to get to the cornfield in a moment, but I want to kind of shout out to the farm. Let's kind of take a look and walk and talk a little bit, Loretta. What do you have here? Okay, so we've got hay bale pyramids. We've got tire pyramids. We've got a big giant corn pit that kids play in, but we have a lot of adults that will go in there. It's really relaxing to be in there. We've got pedal carts. Um, we've got what we call rat racers and a lot of like different yard games. Of course, cornhole is always right. popular. And of course, Damon, the corn maze where the challenge begins. The corn maze. So Todd, this corn has been your family since the late 1800s. Yeah. Your phone's been ringing off the hook about this corn maze. Tell yeah. us what's so special about it. Detroit Lions theme this year. Well, um, it was, I feel like something that that just came together for us last season at uh, at the end of the Lions season last year where we knew that we this is the third time that we've done a corn maze but um, because of the Lions success last year and our love for them our passion for them we wanted to pay tribute to them by by doing this and they went viral back in two days after it was cut back in July and we've we haven't rested since then. So a lot of folks have been seeing the image. It's yeah. Dan Campbell's image out there yeah. with a big lion's mane. Right, right. I yeah. was just going to say, can you explain, or Loretta, you were kind of explaining to me. Right. How do you do this? You did a, it's a GPS kind of technology yep. to map it all out? Yes. Yeah. So once we come up with the design, we send them to Precision Mazes down in Missouri, and they have our GPS coordinates on a computer program. And so then they map out our design on this computer program, and then they come up in mid-July. The corn is probably about six foot tall at that time. They have an implement that has some tracks on it and like a little mulcher, and that also has GPS in it. And so he's able to follow the design on his screen and be very precise about it. And Todd, you guys are making this fun and interactive for the entire family. Sure There's are. also some pluses in there with some trivia for Lions fans. Oh yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, there are QR codes uh, scattered throughout the maze. Every one of them is a trivia question on the Lions. Uh, there's also the likeness of five of our favorite players out there as well, along with uh, some moments from last season recorded by Dan Miller off the radio that Such were, I think, were really cool. I was really going to say cool. we should set the scene just so you can show where the enter is. So we are going to be starting here at 5 o'clock. And uh, after that, I guess it's a timed thing, right, Damon? It's a timed thing. So you see the QR code right here. You can start your timer. Loretta and Todd tells us that it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get through. Right. If you stop and you do all the uh, interactive things and, and scan all 10 QR codes for the trivia, and um, we've got some other things in there. You have an opportunity to, to test your your arm and, and throw oh. through some nets and stuff like that. And if, I think if you take the time to do all that, it's going to take you about 45 okay. minutes to an hour to get through it. I love her confidence. It's going to take me longer. Look, I'm okay, trying so to stay we... confident right now, too. You know, I've never done one of these corn majors. Never. So, uh, oh. and look, I see this big corn cutter right here, too. <laughs> it's kind of giving me two of the corn like vibes. Extra tools? No, 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 are you trying to cheat on me? No. Hold on, oh. wait. I, saw, I got video of you in there testing out first. I might have just been inspecting. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't Look, know. We're so going to have fun. They're making us a challenge time. right now, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to have fun. 
We're going to have fun. Live tonight. We They drop us in here at 5 o'clock, Deb, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We're going to stream it on Click On and Plus. We'll be on social, and of course, we'll be on Local 4. So let's go have some fun in the cornfield, right? You have given yeah, us, you follow us along the trip. You have given us reason enough to watch because somebody's going to get lost. We're pretty sure of that now. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, back uh, again to Karen and Damon in just a few minutes.